This is the Pacific Parkland Foundation's third of six bedtime nature stories. And there's a lot of you out there tonight. And to, today, our storyteller is Melissa. She's a Metro Vancouver Regional Park interpreter. And she is a very creative and I know very excited to share with you. Hello, Melissa. There she is. Um, but before she begins, I just wanted to introduce myself. My name is Janet Antonio, and I'm the Executive Director of the Pacific Parklands Foundation. I love parks. I love taking my kids out into parks. They're a lot older now. Um, and I have the best job in the world because my job is to help make parks better for everyone, the Metro Vancouver Parks, and as well to help people connect to plants and animals and nature in our regional parks. So hopefully this is the start of a lifetime of, of nature loving for you as well. Um, as we're going, I see we have a little heart from, from Greek Cut to, to say we love Melissa and hello from Hazel, who's three years old and out in Maple Ridge as well. So um, as we begin, I just have one, a few housekeeping tasks. And one of them is that each week I do like to recognize that what we now call Metro Vancouver is the traditional territories of the Coast Salish First Nations. And these are the people who lived here long, long, long before, before I came or even my grandparents came to Canada. And I always think that it's important to remember this and that when we go outside to play or to walk in the forest or spending time with family, I think it's, it's, it's always very important to remember to be respectful and to be grateful that we can share this land. And so I'm happy to share that with you tonight. So now I think most of us have arrived and I'm going to turn over the, the podium to Melissa um, and uh, get cozy, put on your list, listening ears and over to you, Melissa. Thank you so much, Janice. I want to give a warm welcome to everyone. Thank you for the love in the chat for those of you who were saying how much you appreciate these story times and and even saying we love Melissa I love you too <laughs> I am really excited to be here today and I'm not here alone tonight I have a little friend I brought with me hello <laughs> this is Sasha squirrel and Sasha the squirrel is going to help us tonight tell the story of the little mouse and squirrel by Enid Blyton but before that we want to tell you all about squirrels don't we Sasha that's right we're really excited because I just like talking about myself. I know. How old are you again, Sasha? I'm about three years old and I just have a lot to say. I noticed there were some three-year-olds in, in the chat and, and you probably have a lot to say too. And it's really exciting and I'm really happy to be here. Okay. Can we get started? Yes, yes, we can get started. <laughs> All right. Well, we're gonna start off by learning a little bit more about squirrels today just like the one you see here. Because what? Squirrels are cute, they're cuddly, they got a fluffy tail. Not very complicated, right? They're more complicated than you think. Really? Well, how so? Well, you really have to just watch. Has anyone just watched a squirrel before? Like really slowed down and noticed. And as you start to watch, and wonder, what are they doing? Why are they doing that? Why are they squirming around so much? <gasps> You'll begin to notice that not all squirrels are the same. That's true, I've noticed that not all squirrels are the same. So for our, Sasha and I have set this up today so that it's really interactive, our story time. So before we get to the story, I'm gonna ask you some poll questions. Now, my friend Jeff is behind the scene right, right now and he's gonna be able to help us with that. But if you can't, for some reason on your device, answer the poll question on the screen, we will get you just to type your answer in the chat, okay? So our first poll question, our first quiz of the night. We'll get Jeff to pull that up. It's a question about what kind of squirrels live right here in Metro Vancouver, in our region. Do we have Douglas squirrels? Do we have flying squirrels? Do we have Eastern gray squirrels? Hmm. Do we have any scary squirrels? And you can pick as many of those answers as are true for you, so that you think are true. So click on as many of those as you want. 
I'm so excited. I wonder what people think. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, I'm gonna show the share the results. Here we go. Very interesting. Would you look at that, Sasha? We have most of you know that there are indeed Douglas squirrels that live here. Some of you think flying squirrels. A lot of you think eastern gray squirrels, even though the name eastern might have thrown you off a bit. And a few of you said yes to scaredy squirrels. <laughs> well, it's true. Um, here we go. We actually have all of those squirrels, including scaredy squirrel, just like the book. Now, scaredy squirrel, the reason I put him in here is because he's actually a flying squirrel. A scaredy squirrel is a flying squirrel, and we indeed have flying squirrels right here in Metro Vancouver. Don't we, Sasha? Yeah, it's great. There's so many different kinds of squirrels, and you might not have known about the flying squirrel because they're out way past your bedtime. They're a nighttime squirrel, and they are the smallest of our local squirrels. The Douglas squirrel on the left there is also really small too. In fact, some people even think that they might be chipmunks, our cousins, but they're not, they're squirrels. Hey, wait, Sasha, I know a song that would help us remember these different kinds of squirrels. Do you like songs? <gasps> I love songs. Really? Yeah. Can, can we sing the song? Uh, I think we can sing the song. I would really love to sing the song. Let's see. I would love you to sing along at home with me. Now remember, I can't actually hear you because everyone's muted, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't sing because I don't want to be singing alone here. All right, here are the lyrics. It's a pretty simple song. It's to the tune of Three Blind Mice. All right, so are you ready? I'm ready. Three types of squirrels, three types of squirrels. See how they run, see how they run. The Douglas squirrel is a native squirrel, the flying squirrel is a nighttime squirrel, the three squirrels from another world. Three types of squirrels, three types of squirrels, three types of squirrels. Three types of squirrels. they were born here. The flying squirrel, which we talked about, is a nighttime squirrel, just like scaredy squirrel. And the gray squirrel, like me. Hey, wait a minute, Sasha. You said in the song, it says, the gray squirrel's from another world. What does that mean? Oh, well, let me tell you. It's pretty funny, actually. A long time ago, rumor has it that in British Columbia, there were no eastern gray squirrels. None at all. We lived on the eastern coast of North America, as our name implies. And then there's a park, a really, really big, famous park in New York. Maybe you've heard of it, Central Park. They have eastern gray squirrels, just like me. And they thought, hey, I got a great idea. Let's give some to Stanley Park in Vancouver as a gift. And then their park could be as cool as our park. So off they went, this fragile box. Well, maybe not quite like that, but inside, gray squirrels. And <laughs> now we have gray squirrels everywhere in British Columbia. Wasn't that a delightful treat? <laughs> well, uh, I suppose so. So what you're saying is a gray squirrel is an introduced species. But wait a minute. We said flying squirrel, gray squirrel, Douglas squirrel. What about black squirrels? I have definitely seen black squirrels when I've gone on walks. Well, yeah, but you know, they're just gray squirrels like me. A different color morph is all black, but they are actually still eastern gray squirrels, even though they're black fur. Huh, wow, I didn't know that. So that's pretty amazing. And I guess underneath all that fur, their squirrels are still a squirrel, right? Yeah, yep, you bet. Well, those gray squirrels or Douglas squirrels or flying squirrels, I want to know. It's winter. What are they doing? So it's another quiz for you. This is a true or false one. Oh, 
Let's see what happened there. That did not work out very well. <laughs> there we go. Quiz time. <laughs> here we have a next poll question. Are squirrels active all year, all winter long here in British Columbia? True or false? Do 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 <laughs> This is an easier one. There's only two choices. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> Most of you said true. You've seen squirrels active all year round, long. And some of you said false. I'm wondering if it's because you might be a little confused. Some squirrels in colder parts of British Columbia definitely do a bit of a hibernation where they sleep for until it gets a bit warm, like a hot day, like a warm day today. Then they'd wake up and scurry around, get some food, then go back to sleep. But here in the lower mainland in Metro Vancouver, Squirrels are active all year round, aren't they, Sasha? That's right. Whether it's winter or spring or summer or even fall, the squirrels are busy, busy, busy. That's right. So in the cold winter months, though, Sasha, just like we have now, what are, what, what are the squirrels doing in Metro Vancouver? Well, all those types of squirrels in Metro Vancouver, they're active, but they really are depending on their shelters and their fat reserves and their food caches to keep them from surviving in all winter long when it's cold out. Can, can I show you? You guys wanna see? I wanna show you some of the places I like to go to stay warm. Yeah, I'd love to see that. Would you guys like to see that? All right, let's see where Sasha would go to stay warm. Here's my uncle Bob. He's in a tree cavity. Oh, look, Barney and Sasha, my cousin who has the same name. Ha, who thought of that one? There we all are in these tree cavities. They are great places for a squirrel to make a den. Now I know, Sasha, I've noticed in some of the regional parks that when there's not enough tree cavities, humans can actually put in special boxes that help provide nesting places or warm shelter for the squirrels, especially flying squirrels. And I wanted to show everybody this picture right here. This is a Douglas for squirrel who's actually moved into a nest box that was meant for a flying squirrel. Well, we're opportunistic. We're not fussy, as long as it's got warm and it's got a small hole for us to fit in, but not any of our predators, that's a great safe place for us. Well, what are these pictures here? Oh, I love these. These are my drays. Wait a minute, a dray? Like the word gray, but with the letter D? Yeah, a dray. A squirrel dray is usually built of twigs or dry leaves and grass, and we kind of push them all together in a big ball, put them in a fork of a tree, and hollow out the inside. They're warm, safe nest spots for us to hide in. Wow, that's pretty amazing, Sasha. Thanks for showing us those pictures. I'm glad we know how all these squirrels stay safe and warm in the winter, but I'm curious. What about food? What do squirrels eat? Are you ready for your next poll question? this time. So this time I want you to select all the answers that are true. What do squirrels eat? Do they eat berries? Or nuts, sorry. Do they eat berries? Do they eat mushrooms? Seeds? Or my favorite, macaroni and cheese? Don't be silly. <laughs> I love that some of you picked macaroni and cheese. That is awesome. <laughs> There were more um, people that chose it, but they but they took their vote away. <laughs> yeah. Is it because I said it was my favorite? <laughs> uh, we all know that squirrels eat nuts, obviously, but I think you'll be surprised to learn some of the other foods that squirrels eat. So if we close this up, I can show you some more. Here we go. Yeah, I brought all these pictures. Depending on the kind of squirrel, we eat all sorts of things, like nuts, which we know. We eat flowers, delicious, sugary nectar on the inside. Mm -mm -mm. We'll eat mushrooms. This is especially a favorite of the flying squirrel. We might eat some fruit, some seeds, of course, and our absolute favorite, <gasps> cones. Mm, they're so delicious. I've seen those, that picture right there of the Douglas squirrel eating a cone. 
that looks like a Sitka spruce cone, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I've seen those before too. In fact, I collected one the last time I was in the park. I found a little piece just like this, where the outside part is all chewed off and just a little bit of the cone remained on the top, almost like a flower. I like to call these cones on the cob. It kind of reminds me of a corn on the cob and you hear this the husk in the middle. Let's see, I think we have one more photo, don't we, Sasha? Yeah, I think so, let's see. Here's another one. Look at that cone on the cob. <laughs> I think that's pretty funny. Well, Sasha, when all this squirrel is eating, I've also found not just bits like this, but I've actually found piles of little, looks like cone or nutshells or seed bits all over the forest floor. What's that about? Well, you probably know squirrels are a bit messy eaters. They're kind of like toddlers. We just eat what we can and what we like and all the bits that we can't eat just go onto the ground in big piles. And those messy piles are called middens. Those are our leftovers that we leave in the forest. Wait a minute. I thought the middens were where the school squirrels hide the food. Well, they kind of are because we don't really take our food very far often. We'll just, you know, get it out of the hiding spot, eat it right then and there, and then go. So sometimes their piles of our caches, our hiding spots for the food is nearby. Sometimes they're just the leftovers. They're all called middens, and they're good evidence that a squirrel is nearby and active in the forest. So if you're out walking, you can look for these places. Now, if you're a gray squirrel like me, I'll have lots of small little caches all over the place. But if you're a Douglas squirrel, like the one in the photo, you usually have just one big larder, one big hiding spot. Really, is that true? Yeah, they like to hide their spots all in one place. And then they only have one place to go for all their delicious food. Ha, huh, how squirrely of you. Well, thank you for sharing all that information, Sasha. Well, you're welcome. I had a lot of fun learning about these squirrel antics, if you will, and I learned something new about drays and middens. I'm getting a little tired though. I know everyone who's listening is probably excited to get her up for this story. So before we go, we're gonna sing one song before we go. Wanna sing one more song? Oh, you bet I do, I love songs. So we're gonna sing one more song before we start our story. And this song is really special to me. It is to the tune of One Elephant Went Out to Play by Sharon Lois and Brown. We're going to sing it through twice. If you know the words, sing along at home and I'll feel your love way across the screen. One Douglas squirrel went out to play upon a hemlock tree one day. She found some home to eat and now it's time to go to sleep um. two flying squirrels went out to play upon a hemlock tree one day they found some cones to eat and now it's time to go to sleep Gray squirrels went out to play upon a hemlock tree one day. They found some cones to eat, and now it's time to go to sleep. Oh. Hi, boys. Really good. Oh, sadly, I'm really, really tired, and I'm going to go to sleep now. But before we do, I want to say bye, everybody out there in Zoom land. I'm going to go sleep now. Bye. Bye, Sasha. We'll tuck you in right over here. There you go. <laughs> well, that was really fun to have Sasha come along and share all that information about squirrels with us today. I don't know about you. But some of that information was new to me about squirrels and their drays and the black squirrel is actually an eastern gray squirrel. Mind blown.
And now I'm really excited to share one of my favorite childhood stories with you. It's actually called The Little Squirrel, uh, Little Mouse and Squirrel. And to do this, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Here we go. And we're just going to pull up that story for you and we'll be able to read along together. This story is by an author named Enid Blyton, and I've adapted it for this purpose. Enid Blyton is an author who lived in England a long time ago and she wrote lots of short stories about kids exploring in the forest and finding all sorts of wonderful things. This story is special to me because I read it when I was a kid and I was hoping to share it all with you today. So I'm actually just reading directly from my story so forgive me here. I'm going to turn a little bit and actually may bring a, a little squirrel down to help me out. Let's see, here we go. <laughs> this one has an acorn in his hand. Okay. There was a time in the forest when a little mouse got hurt. You see, he was scurrying along one evening and he didn't see a small knot of roots ahead of him. As luck would have it, the little mouse tripped over and his foot got stuck. Oh, how it was stuck. But the time he tugged and pulled his foot free, he was really hurt. He was limping so badly that he had to find a place, safe place in the forest to rest again. Well, his sore foot made him feel very poorly indeed. He couldn't go out hunting for the grains and seeds like he used to. And he was hungry and he wondered if he could ask anyone for help. But by his hole that he was hiding in, he saw a fat gray squirrel. This squirrel was sitting up on his hind legs with his bushy tail in the air and nibbling on an acorn. Hello, squirrel, said the mouse humbly. Can you? Maybe um, spare me an acorn, or maybe you could get a rose hip from the bramble bush over there. I cannot go because I have hurt my foot and I'm very, very hungry. What? You, a mouse, dare ask a gray squirrel for a favor like that? The squirrel cried in rage. Of course, I shall not help you. Do you think I'm a servant of mice? The nerve of idea of asking such a thing. Well, I didn't mean to be uncivil. I just, I've only hurt my foot and I can't get food myself and I'm oh so hungry. Then ask someone else to do your hunting for you, said this selfish squirrel, and he bounded off. Well, that little mouse sat at the entrance to his burrow and he watched. He watched that squirrel as he hunted all these delicious things to eat. The little squ it was autumn and the little gray creature was storing away teeny heaps of nuts here and there so that when he awoke in the warm days again, and he could go to his hidden stores, have a feast, and then have a snooze. He hid some hazelnuts behind the western cedar tree. He pulled up, put up some cones in under a pile of leaves in the ditch, and he even scraped a little hole under the tree nearby and hid seven maple seeds. He was well prepared for the lean days of winter. The poor little mouse sure wished he could go and take some nuts, but he couldn't move very far because of his sore foot. He lay in his hole and nearly starved. And then one day, another mouse ran by and saw the thin and hungry one. What's the matter, he said, running to the hole. Well, the little mouse told him all about it and the other mouse listened. Well, you know, I would dearly love to help you, but I have a large hungry family and it's all I can do to find food for them. Food is very scarce this year. 
I know where plenty of food is, said the little mouse eagerly. Get it for me and we will share. We'll look for hazelnuts behind the western red cedar tree and in the hollow tree. Hunt under the leaves in the ditch for some cones and under the roots of the Douglas fir tree opposite. I saw a squirrel put some there. Well, that other mouse ran off with glee. Sure enough, he found nuts and cones aplenty. He carried them one by one to his own hole. Then he went and he fetched the little mouse and together he helped him to the hole too. Then with all the mouse family, the first little mouse ate in peace. Soon his leg was healing and he could run around happily once more. Yay, I'm better! The winter grew cold, much colder than normal. So the gray squirrel that we saw earlier slept soundly for an entire month until the month of January. Then there was a warm spell a day and not much unlike today. The gray squirrel awoke to went to go find his nuts. <gasps> but alas, however hard he looked, he couldn't find anything to eat at all. His stores, his caches were all empty, each and every one. So he went back to his tree, hungry, and slept again. Then February came and the sun sent its warm fingers into the tree where the squirrel was sleeping soundly. Once again, he awoke and came scampering down, hungry as a hunter. He searched behind the western red cedar. <gasps> no hazelnuts there. He hunted in the ditch. No cones. None to be seen. At last, he put his little paw on the hole he had hole he made beneath the roots of the Douglas fir tree. Nope, not a nut to be found. He must go hungry. Oh, 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 I'm so afraid, he said in fright. I shall starve. And then, suddenly, he saw a sight. A little mouse, who was now plump and sleek. The squirrel called to him. Oh, little mouse, you are fat. You let me have some food, please. I beg you, please. I am lean and hungry, and I cannot find any of the food I store away. You must have some extra for me, please. Last autumn, I asked you for food, said the mouse, stopping. But you said no. Why should I help you now? You're right, said the squirrel sadly. I treated you badly. There's no reason why you should not treat me this way. Wait, said the little mouse. There is a reason why I should not treat you the same squirrel. You and I are not alike. You were selfish and greedy, but I am not. You shall share what I have. And he brought the squirrel two nuts and an acorn. And the squirrel thanked the mouse. Thank you, thank you. And he humbly vowed he would repay the mouse when he found his own stores that he had hidden away. The little mouse said with a gleam in his eye, you know squirrel, I was really lucky this winter. I found four heaps of nuts and cones, one behind the western red cedar, one in the ditch, one in the hollow tree, and one under the roots of the Douglas fir tree. So I and my friends have feasted very, very well. The squirrel listened. At first he was angry. Those were his nuts, and his cones, and his seeds, but he remembered that after all, the mouse had shared the food. So, said the, he said, those were my nuts and that's where my cones went. Well, little mouse, I deserve to lose them to my greed. Forgive me, little mouse. Next autumn, I will store up a larder for you too. And he kept his word. And now the little mouse and squirrel are great friends. And if you ever see one, you'll know that the other is somewhere nearby. And that <laughs> is the end of 
the story, the mouse and the squirrel. Wasn't that nice? That was so wonderful, Melissa. Thank you. And uh, I thank Sasha and all the other characters and the husband musician as well. That was a very special treat, a whole family deal. Um, I also wanted to tell you, Melissa, that there are so many comments in the chat thanking you and, and celebrating the songs and, and having a lot of fun. So I know all of you um, really appreciate what Melissa's done for us tonight. And I, uh, I hope you get to come back someday. This is the third of six, so we are now halfway through. And next week, we also have another story, The Chickadee and the Fir Tree. So I hope all of you have enjoyed this as much as we have. I hope you get outside in this wonderful weather and uh, when you get to see those squirrels because they were out in forest today um, that you think of Melissa and and all of the the joy that we've had today so thank you all and to all good night good night <laughs>